You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. I'm Michael Harriet, and welcome to the Griot Daily, the only podcast that actually knows what it sounds like when doves cry. Sounds like cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. I think it's something like that. Anyway, we're here every day to give you a little mix of current events, politics, black thoughts, and of course, we can't leave the white people out. So on Wednesdays, it's White People Wednesdays. We dedicate a special day to investigating and interrogating whiteness because, you know, we believe in diversity and inclusion here at the GRIA. For real, seriously, we do. For White People Wednesdays, maybe we should talk about why the Republican Party is the party of whiteness. Because, I mean, for real, like, white people really do like the Republican Party. I'm Michael Harriet, world famous white peopleologist, and this is the Greed O Daily. In the last 50 years, the majority of white people have voted for Republicans in the presidential primary. Even if you look at today, you know, according to Pew Research, about four out of every five white people vote Republican. And that's it, right? There is no other demographic that votes for the Republican Party. The majority of Asian voters vote for the Democratic Party. The majority of Hispanic voters vote for the Democratic Party. The majority of black voters vote for the Democratic Party. So, you know, even though we like to think of the Democratic Party as the party of black people, it's not. It's just that the Republican Party is the party of white people. They don't have any other solid constituents. Their voters are white evangelicals, um, white conservatives. Um, let's see, who else? Um, white people who like American flags, white people who wear flip-flops, white people who wear cowboy boots, white people who like red and white hats with uh, Times New Roman font. All kinds of white people, but the Republican Party is just the party of white people. And to understand why that is, like we got to go back, right? Because you hear a lot of reasons from Republicans why black people should support them. First of all, they always say, that Republicans were the people who, you know, gave black people the right to be free. Like, nah, bro. Remember our Juneteenth episode? Black people freed ourselves. This is like the white people in the South decided they didn't want to be part of America anymore. But it wasn't like it was a bunch of white people in the North or a bunch of abolitionists who were just warning black people to be free. No, for the large majority of the country, Black people really didn't care, which is why slavery persisted so long, because white people weren't willing to fight to end it. It was just that white people in the South were willing to fight to keep it. Let's not have the idea that, you know, the North was just filled with pro-black people and the South was where racism resided. No, it was just racist white people all over. But... After the Republican Party was founded, there's also another myth that, you know, black people really supported Republicans. Now, it's kind of true, but it's really something that we can't verify because most of the black people lived in the South after the Civil War. And most of those people were prevented from voting. And the reason they were prevented from voting was because of the Compromise of 1877, which gave us Jim Crow. Let's disabuse ourselves of the notion of Republican and Democrat for for right now, because there's another thing that you need to know about. See, black people voted for Republicans, but Republicans didn't support black people because when we talk about the Republican Party, We're not talking about one giant swath of people across the country because you don't know about the Lily Whites. In 1888, so this Texan named Norvis Wright Cuny, 
He was a black Republican and he was elected chairman of the Texas Republican Party. And it was like the first time a black person had held this elective position because, of course, you know, black people weren't voting that long. Well, anyway, the white Republicans, those same Republicans who told you they ended slavery and they fought for black people's right, those Texas Republicans fought CUNY because, of course, he was black. And so they used the Jim Crow law laws to just kick black people out of the state convention. And they called themselves the Lily White Movement. Well, that took root all over America. There was Lily White parties in North Carolina, in Virginia. Um, I don't want y'all to confuse this with Lil White, who is probably a white SoundCloud rapper that I've never heard of. I bet you there's a rapper named Lil White. So when this Lily White movement took over, especially in the South, the Democrats started gaining power. So what did Republicans do? They weren't going to solicit black people. Now they didn't need us that bad. What they started doing is recruiting white people. And the only way they could recruit white people in the South was to be more racist than the Democrats. So when you talk about those Democratic KKK members, notice you never read about the Republicans who convicted them. Notice you never read about the white movement of Republicans who fought the KKK tooth and nail to preserve black freedom. It's because there are only two parties, white people and everybody else the Southern conservatives and everybody else. Another thing that, you know, your favorite Republican will tell you is that Republicans voted for the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. But that's kind of not true, right? So when the Voting Rights Act was passed, there were 94 Southern Democrats in the House of Representatives. Seven voted for the bill, right? So that kind of proves that Democrats were racist, right? But there were 10 Southern Republicans who represented those Confederate states. They were in the House of Representatives too. So those white Republicans, of course, they supported the Voting Rights Act, right? Nope. Zero Republicans in the South voted for the Voting Rights Act in the House of Representatives. It was not Democrat and Republican. It was white people versus everybody else. Now, in the North, the House Democrats supported the Voting Rights Act. <gasps> but that ain't what the Republicans said on Twitter, right? It was not Democrats versus Republicans. It was just white people in the South versus everybody else. Racist versus everybody else. The name of the party does not matter. Republicans, you know, white people, Southern conservatives will tell you that black people voted Republican before they were lured to the Democratic plantation. But that's not actually true. You see this? This is a chart of the black vote since 1936. See, it started with FDR in the 30s, and all the way up until today, there was never a party that had the majority of the black vote until Republicans got racist. So the Democratic Party didn't lure black people with you know, promises and lies. The Republicans were so racist that the black vote was split up until they explicitly said, I mean, we don't like black people. And that's why the Republican Party is the party of white people. It is not that the Democratic Party is the party of black people. The Democratic Party is the party of, again, everybody else except white people. And it's been that way since the beginning.
So remember, when someone asks you why we think Republicans are racist, tell them, you don't know. Ask Republicans why they act so racist. Thank you for listening. And remember, don't forget to download the Grio app. Listen, subscribe, listen to the podcast every day. We're here every day. And look, I'm telling you, man, they're really on my neck about you downloading this app. Like, even if you listen to it on, like, Spotify or whatever, just download the app. Right? Like, that, that just helps us out. Like, you, I'm not asking you to pay for it this podcast. I'm not asking you for a donation. I'm not even asking you to, you know, wear a Michael Harriet is the greatest podcast ever t-shirt. Those are coming, right? Those haven't been printed yet. All I'm asking you to do is just download the real app, subscribe, listen to us daily. And as always, we'll leave you with another black saying. I trust the Republican as far as I can throw him. So let's see how far we can throw them. Peace. Here we out. Thank you for listening to The Grio Daily. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star review, download The Grio app, subscribe to the show, and share it with everyone you know. Please email all questions, suggestions, and compliments to podcasts at thegrio.com. You are now listening to The Grio's Black Podcast Network. Black culture amplified. You're watching the Blackest Questions podcast with Christina Greer. In this podcast, we ask our guests five of the Blackest Questions so we can learn a little bit more about them and have some fun while we're doing it. Okay, so this is a trick question. We're also going to learn a lot about Black history, past and present. Beautiful. I learned a wonderful fact today. Great. So here's how it works. We have five rounds of questions about us, Black history, the whole diaspora, current events, you name it. With each round, the questions get a little tougher. Oh, you got me, you got me. Uh, Let me see, let me see, let me see. I have no idea. I knew you were going to go there, Dr. Greer. Subscribe to the show wherever you listen to your podcast and share it with everyone you know.